SAGE, an acronym for Semi-Automatic Ground Environment, was a network of radar and missile bases located across North America that were all connected via large central computers, some of the largest ever constructed actually, which all worked together to detect Soviet bombers and triangulate their exact location, which was then fed to long-range Bomark missiles that would be fired at the bomber groups. Also, F-106 Delta Dart fighter jets would be scrambled to intercept bomber groups that any missiles had missed. Um, SAGE was an evolution of a system developed in Britain during World War II. The Royal, the Royal Air Force had experimented with Chain Home, an early radar system that would detect German bombers that were crossing over the North Sea. But they soon discovered trying to scramble fighters to intercept bombers when the fighters didn't even know exactly where they themselves were and the bomber's position wasn't exact, was pretty difficult. So they came up with a system of uh, sectors. One radar would track friendly aircraft and the other would detect enemy bombers in their own specified sectors. Then the two radar systems would work together and pinpoint the position of both groups and give the fighters a direction to travel in to intercept the bombers. Though generally effective against propeller-driven bombers, the system was slow. Often the information was 5 to 10 minutes out of date by the time the fighters actually received the coordinates. Um, it wasn't too bad when you're tracking prop-driven airplanes that are only traveling like 200 miles per hour. But with jet bombers flying at 600 plus miles per hour, um, when that was considered, the system just wasn't effective enough. Um, by the war's end, analog computers had been installed at chain home radar stations to automatically convert radar readings into map locations, which really sped up the system. The Royal Navy further improved the system by using another analog computer that took X and Y locations on a map and automatically generated aircraft tracks based on repeated radar input. Um, similar systems were used by various allied nations, um, including the United States. But by the early 1950s, the United States was staring down the barrel of a potential nuclear Armageddon with the Soviet Union, who had just detonated their first atomic weapons, and was now desperate for a system that could alert the Pentagon of a potential first strike. With the speed of jet aircraft at this point, it was no small obstacle to overcome. A study group was assembled to solve the problem, called the Air Defense Systems Engineering Committee. They concluded that in order to for the U.S. to be able to detect enemy bombers far enough away without them lowering their altitude to avoid radar, we would need a large network of radar stations to overlap one another. And this was doable easily with the available technology. Now the issue would become actually managing this large system of radar stations and allowing them to actually coordinate with each other and then relaying that information to missiles and planes that had to locate and track bomber groups hundreds of miles away. Um, Manual plotting that was just simply too slow. By the time it was plotted and relayed, that the information was you know 10 or 15 minutes old, and with a bomber moving 600 miles per hour, adjusting its altitude, there's just it was just simply not efficient. Um, a computerized system was the only option, and the information flow from these radar stations would have to be automatic as well. Having any manual input or operators would just simply be too slow. The type of computer needed to do this at the time, it didn't even exist, and they weren't entirely sure it could even be built. The committee was then introduced to Jerome Wisner of MIT, and um, he explained that a computer had been in development for the Office of Navy Research as a flight simulator, and it may be fast enough to do what they needed. It was called the Whirlwind 1, and it was actually the first computer ever built that ran in real time. In September of 1950, an experiment was set up at Hanscom Field in Massachusetts using radar connected to the Whirlwind 1 at, to detect a decoy aircraft that flew past the airbase. The system successfully digitized the radar information, proving that the concept of a computer-controlled radar tracking system was actually feasible. Um, the development of the complete system was then known as Project Lincoln, and it began in earnest, uh, working closely with IBM, and the newly created Lincoln Laboratory at MIT, they developed the Whirlwind 2 computer, which would be renamed FSQ-7 by the Air Force in 1953. The system was officially known as SAGE in 1954, and in 1955, Air Force 
personnel began IBM training at the Kingston, New York prototype facility and the 4620th Air Defense Wing was established at Lincoln Laboratory. Um, at its peak, IBM had over 7,000 employees assigned to the SAGE project in one form or another. In 1957, the first SAGE System Direction Center groundbreaking took place at McCord Air Force Base, where the computers began arriving in November of 1958 and the first SAGE Regional Battle Post began operating there in early 1959. Since SAGE used normal phone lines to transmit its data between radar stations and direction centers, AT&T hardened many of its switching centers, putting them deep underground. And by 1963, there were 24 operational SAGE directional computer centers. Each directional center had two FSQ-7 computers, one of which was active and the other was a backup for redundancy. Each individual computer weighed over 250 tons and were the largest computers ever built. They each had 60,000 vacuum tubes, used 3 megawatts of electricity, and performed about 75,000 instructions per second. The directional centers also had two diesel power generators in case of a blackout and its own cooling plant to cool down the 60,000 vacuum tubes. These were massive computers. The computers would detect enemy aircraft using dozens of radar stations in their designated zones of operation. They would calculate their position and produce multiple intercept points by estimating the track of the bombers. Then they would guide Beaumont ground the air missiles onto enemy bombers using the radar to triangulate their positions. They would also feed targeting information to the autopilot systems and manned interceptor aircraft that would be scrambled to meet the enemy threat. The network of radar stations using SAGE was approximately 182 different stations. There were also mobile radar integrated into the system using aircraft-based radar systems. They even had ship-based radar stations built out of old World War II uh, Liberty ships they had converted to radar stations. Many of the stations were located well off the coast on top of oil drilling platforms converted to hold the radar stations on top. In Canada, there were three lines of radar, the Pine Tree Line, which roughly followed the border of U.S. and Canada, the Mid-Canadian Radar Line, which cut Canada in two from about southern Alaska to Newfoundland, and then there was the Dew Line, or Distant Early Warning Line, which was actually north of the Arctic Circle and had radar stations dotting the coast of Baffin Island, Greenland, and Alaska. SAGE ended up costing over $10 billion, more than even the Manhattan Project, during its entire development, its ability to truly effective to be effective against enemy bombers was a real concern. Uh, during tests of the system, it showed that only about a quarter of enemy bombers would have actually been intercepted successfully. But despite these issues of budget and effectiveness, SAGE was the backbone of NORAD's air defense system all the way into the 1980s. And by then, the vacuum tube operated FSQ-7s were extremely outdated and costly to maintain. In the 1980s, SAGE radar sites were absorbed into the Air Force's Joint Surveillance System, and updated computers and protocols were put into place. Um, many of them were, were dismantled because the, the newer radar technology had much longer range, so you only need to have as many stations. The old SAGE FSQ-7s were pretty much antiques by this time, and the North Bay computer was dismantled and sent to Boston's Computer Museum in 1996. Others were dismantled and pieces of them were sent to the Computer Museum in Mountain View, California. They've also appeared in movies as computer props. So that's SAGE, guys. Uh, a giant radar system that spanned all of North America, basically.